Hi everyone, time for Song for a Rainy Morning by Tommy Emmanuel. Now, this is a bit of a milestone tutorial. This is the 10th one I'm making. Uh, the views still are slow, but responses are uh, overwhelmingly positive. Uh, so thank you all for watching and let's try and build this channel a little bit more. This song is a request. One of the very first tutorials I made, uh, this song popped up. And I didn't know it at the time, it was something completely new for me, so I looked it up and I noticed quite quickly that this is, in terms of Tommy Emmanuel songs, actually a very easy one. I'm not saying that this is an easy song, I'm saying that if you're interested in learning the Tommy Emmanuel style of playing, this might actually be a very, very interesting place to start. Because if you count out the total amount of bars in which new material is presented, then this song is only 10 bars long. Everything else is repetition. So if you want to play this entire song, you only have to learn 10 bars of music and you're good to go. So let's see how long I can stretch out this tutorial. Uh, I'm hoping it doesn't end up like 40 or 50 minutes long like the previous ones, since there's not really, really a lot to cover. So let's dive into it. You need uh, the guitar in standard tuning and a capo at the second fret. Normally when I do tutorials I remove the capo altogether uh, because it's easier if I have to explain certain movements going up the guitar uh, so you don't always have to count up two extra frets. Now in this song there is only one single uh, moment where you actually have to move a little bit up the neck so I'm sticking with the capo today. Let's have a look at the intro. Here we go. probably already notice why there's only 10 bars of music in this entire song. Even the intro is only two chords repeated over and over and over again. You're starting out with a G chord, but we're only using the ring finger on the third fret of the low E string and the pinky on the third fret of the high E string. Everything else is open strings and when you're performing the alternating bass line, you're not touching the A string. It's only E string and E string. And then we're moving over to an F chord. Now this is the only hard part about this song. You will need to play this F chord with the thumb over the side of the neck. Now in this instance, in the intro, you could swap it around. The fingering doesn't actually become easier, but you could play something like this. It's, it's not an easy chord, but it is possible to play it without the thumb over the side of the neck. But as you will see in the bridge section, you will need the thumb over the side of the neck as well. And then there is no alternative because of all the mel melodic stuff that is happening on top. So if you want to play this song, the thumb over the side of the neck on this F chord is mandatory. It has to be possible, otherwise you won't be able to play the bridge section. Now, the fingering on the F chord is thumb on the first fret of the low E string, ring finger on the third fret of the D string, open G string, first fret on the B string, third fret on the high E string. So you're getting an F sus2 chord. And the way we move from one chord to another, from the G chord to the F chord is Tommy plays it different in each and every uh, video I see him play the song. Uh, this is mostly because this probably for him will be an easy song. So he's got, he's, he has loads of time to uh, look for variations or, or to just change it on the fly. He's perfectly capable of that. So I try to uh, just narrow it down a little bit and this is what I play uh, and what you can see down below in the tablature. the same pattern always looping around so I'm starting I'm actually only using the thumb index finger and the middle finger for this one so two open strings G string and B string and then right away I will move over to the high E string and the B string that's the part on the G chord and then if we 
swap over to the F chord, you will play a hammer on with the index finger to the first fret as you're playing the low F bass note. So that's the swap from one chord to another. So as you're putting down the index finger at the exact same time, you're playing the low F bass note. F chord it's arpeggiating in between the bass notes mostly. One more time, really slowly. So in that part is repeated three times. The fourth time around you just play the F chord in full. One more time, the intro really slowly and then we'll be moving over to the verse. the verse one time and you will immediately notice lots and lots and lots of repetition. Here we go. A little bit slower than concert speed, so a little bit slower than Tommy usually does it. Now, as you can see, the first three bars and the next three bars are almost identical. And also, I just mentioned it, it's only three bars. This song might mess a little bit with your uh, internal metronome because we're very, very used to hearing music in, in uh, sets of four bars instead of three bars. So once in a while, you'll probably notice that you'll want to add an extra bar of a G chord before continuing into the next, but we'll handle that as soon as we get there. So we're starting out on the same G chord. We don't even need the uh, pinky on the high E string now. It's just third fret on the low E string and open strings. If you're starting out, just play it like this. Very simple, the melody note with the thumb doing the bass part. Once you're uh, a bit more advanced, you can add in a few very, very light uh, filler notes, but make sure they are very quiet like this. So really, really softly. Almost too soft to hear. So just to fill up the accompanying part a little bit. And then we're moving over to an D over F sharp voicing with the thumb over the side of the neck. So thumb, second fret on the low E string, middle finger, second fret on the G string, and pinky, third fret on the B string. You will have to pull off right away to the first fret on the B string as well. Now, just to mention this, this chord. If this is awkward, you can actually change this without too much difficulties to this middle finger on the low E string, ring finger on the second fret of the, D, uh, of the G string and the pinky on top. So now, this is exactly the same thing as with the thumb. So if the thumb over the side of the neck is something that bothers you for some reason or it's hard to do, then just focus on that first F chord in the intro. But this is perfectly playable without the thumb over the side of the neck. I'm gonna stick to using the thumb over the side of the neck for most of the song. So what you get is the bass part keeps going and together with the very first bass note on the low F sharp, you pull off to the first fret. 
And from that point on, each melody note is in between the bass notes. So really slowly, the first uh, melody note, the high D, is together with the F sharp on the thumb, pulling off to the first fret and then everything else, as you will see, is played in between the bass notes. Stick those two first chords together. To an E minor chord. Then from the E minor chord, there's quite a big jump. You're ending up on the, the open G string. And we're moving the melody up an octave right now. So what you get is this. still in between the bass notes. So each melody note is in between the bass notes. Fingering might be a bit tricky. Uh, in the uh, teaser video I actually played the D note with the pinky and then moving the pinky down one string. I, I watched one of Tommy's videos again uh, just to see how, picks it, uh, how he does it for the tutorial and he plays the uh, D note on the third fret of the B string with the ring finger. That way he doesn't have to move over anything else when he switches to the, D, uh, to the C at the ninth chord. So he does this. changes to the C chord, he can just leave the ring finger and the pinky where it is. See? Melod melodic section up until that point. Ending up on the C chord. Now on the C chord, it's a bit of a partial C chord, he's not actually playing uh, the uh, E note second fret on the D string. And that means that the very first time when you alternate the bass note, the thumb has to go up a little bit higher than what we're used to. You'll be playing first bass note, third fret on the A string, and then an open G string for the bass note. And the last bass note is actually an open D string. It might feel a bit weird in the beginning to move up the thumb so high up to the strings, up to the G string. It does for me anyway. So if you're used to playing this style, most of the thumb movement is limited to the A, D and E strings. So the, the three bottom strings would be the typical bass line for the C chord. So in this time you're moving up all the way to the G string. the whole C part. So from the C chord to first fret, first finger, index finger on the second fret to an open string. And everything else yet again in between the bass notes. So the index finger is together with that open uh, G string uh, used in the bass part and yet again everything else is played in between the bass notes. Now when I play the song up to speed it just feels really natural to play to play that F sharp second fret to the open string with a, by means of a pull off. So Tommy plays actually hits the E string two times. I'm used to playing this, it just feels very natural doing this with a pull-off. So the way Tommy does it, it's a, the mel melody is a bit more defined in that way. When I play it up to speed, this is almost how it naturally comes out for me. Exactly the same melody, I'm just adding in that pull-off on the high E string. If you like to add that in, just go ahead or play it exactly the way Tommy does it by 
hitting uh, the top E string two times with the middle finger. We're almost done. Most of uh, the melodic part is already in your fingers. Uh, one more time, repetition from the beginning, and let me add the last bar. Notice that? That's a really, really strange fingering. You're ending up on an E minor chord, and then adding in the A note is done by putting the index finger behind that E minor chord. See? And this is done because then we can leave the index finger where it is, add the thumb yet again over the side of the neck on the second fret for the very last chord. That E minor chord is, is, is a bit weird in the beginning. You actually have to twist your wrist just slightly to get that A note down below uh, in there. Um, the reason why this feels so awkward is Tommy actually plays the E minor chord with one finger. So he's developed this habit of pushing down two strings with one single finger and he's not using a bar chord. He's actually, uh, his, his posture is quite similar to uh, playing just a single note, but apparently his fingers are are so wide that it's possible for him to push down two strings at the same time. So he's just playing this with the middle finger and then it's quite easy to add in the index finger uh, right behind it. We can make it a little bit easier in this part, but as you will see the second time around, this part changes just a little bit. Uh, so we have to use with uh, separate or, or uh, with uh, different fingerings for each section. So if you want to leave out the thumb over the side of the neck or not even leave it out if you want to have a few more options then you can play this going to the E minor chord as you usually would using the index finger and the middle finger adding in the ring finger for the melody and then to the D over F sharp chord by using middle finger, index finger, or even the thumb for the bass note. And back to the G chord. That's a perfectly good uh, possibility as well. So one more time, the original adjusted Tommy fingering. And you will see in just a second, the second time around, this actually makes sense, playing it like this. The alternative fingering. Sounds exactly the same. Congratulations, you now can play the whole verse. There's just one tiny variation the second time around. So one more time. All everything we saw up until this point difference only the very very last uh, little bit on that D over F sharp chord is different. First I want to point your attention to the way the three first bars and the next three bars are working together. You would or it's, it would not be unlogical to expect a, a four bar um, system in, in this song but Tommy each time links the third bar straight away back into the first bar. So bar one, bar two, three, one, and off again. So let's have a quick look at that very last bar. So you're coming down from
second fret with the thumb and then you're actually just keeping the bass pattern going. So what you're doing is index finger, thumb, you're adding in the ring finger on the fourth fret. Don't try to play this with the index finger because it's a melody note. Just keep the thumb pattern going. G chord. So the very last section. So and only the very last bass note is adding in the ring finger at the fourth fret. This part is why I choose to play it like this with that really weird uh, e minor fingering adding in the index finger behind it because this is actually a bit harder if you uh, choose the alternative fingering. And then moving over with the pinky actually feels uh, more difficult for me than just adding in the, the thumb on the second fret but it could be different for you, so if you're not uh, blessed with larger hands and, and the, the uh, thumb over the side of the neck feels difficult, then this might be an option as well. Could be a, a solution as well, so adding in for the uh, E minor chord to the index finger on the bass note. leaves out that or that leaves the uh, ring finger or the pinky open to uh, jump to that fourth fret when it is needed. And that way you can play that section without using the thumb over the side of the neck. You're done. This is the whole verse and this is repeated I think three or four times just identical to this very first uh, time. Now there are a few variations. The very first time Tommy plays this. And so on and so on. And sometimes he likes to change it to this. And what he's doing is playing around with uh, putting the melody in front of the beat or right on the beat. Now we already saw this I think in the Timberlake Road tutorial. This is a variation he likes to use almost all the time in all of his songs. So what we're doing now, the very first melody is normally this. And this, sometimes he likes to put in this variation. So The only difference is the placement of the B and the C uh, during the melody. What I do is I just change the position where the pull-off comes, so the first time around. between the pinky and the index finger. The second time around I use the pull-off on the index finger to the open string. Really slowly. That's the only difference and then you can also choose to put this G note which is normally in front of the beat to play it on the beat. That's what you normally get. You could also play this. And just keep everything else exactly the same. It's two little variations but it actually helps. There is so much repetition in this song that putting in these two variations actually livens it up quite a bit. So you don't have to play everything uh, exactly the same all the way through, just adding one or two of these variations in whatever order you would like. 
So we just had the first verse. Now the second verse is a full repeat of the first verse. Here we go, a bit more up to speed. into the bridge section. Something completely different. Let me play it one more time, uh, one time for you. A bit slower than concert speed and then I'll come back and have a look. starting out for the bridge is just open strings A string D string B string the very first move is a little bit tricky you will be pulling off to two open strings and aiming for the exact moment you're playing the D bass note and right away to the same fingering so second fret on the G string first fret on the B string It's a melody thirds, nothing too difficult in terms of fingering. You have to make sure that the bass pattern continues all the way through. So you're starting out with the aforementioned pull off, moving up two frets, then adding in on with the capo in mind the fifth fret. So you're actually on the seventh fret in ring finger and pinky both on the fifth fret and then sliding up to the seventh fret with the capo in mind actually the ninth fret and again the same timing each and every melody note is played in between the bass notes that's the very first time you actually play the melody note and the bass note together so you're ending up on that 7th fret, back to the 5th fret, back to the 3rd fret, 4th fret, it's the exact same fingering, going up as going down. To an A minor uh, chord voicing, but you're actually playing an E minor chord, so the bass note will be an open E and you will be changing over to an E minor chord right away. One more time. Once you start this section, Tommy actually tightens up the bass muting just a little bit. So for the most part of the rest of the song, bass notes are actually played open. And once he enters this part, he will actually just put a little more drive into the bass notes and mute them lightly so you really get that rhythmic push going. So one more time, up until this point. Something really, really tricky, or at least to my uh, fingers, is happening on that E minor chord. So you're ending up on the E minor chord. See what happens? Tommy interrupts the, the alternating bass pattern for just a little second. So he's playing. So you're playing the open uh, low E string three times in a row. Really tricky. The fingering on top isn't that difficult. So you're going from an A minor voicing to two open strings, B string and G string, to index finger on the second fret of the G string, ring finger on the fourth fret of the B string. And again, he's playing a melody in thirds. And that's probably why he couldn't keep alternating the bass line and he just had to pump three times on that low E string uh, just to keep the momentum going. 
Hi everyone. No, you're not imagining anything. This is a, a new set of clothes. We're a few days later now and during the editing of the video I noticed that I actually forgot to mention something important. In the video right now I'm uh, explaining to you how to play the bridge section um, with the uh, interruption of the bass part. Now I slightly adjusted the part to get the, the uh, interruption of the bass line a bit easier into your fingers. So what I'm playing on the video right now is this. So this is what I'm showing you right now in the uh, earlier part of the video. Now what I'm doing is I'm aligning the melody with that interrupted bass note just to make it in the beginning a little bit easier to get it into your fingers. So this is what it sounds like. And when we move to the A and F sharp triad that's when we normally would alternate with the bass uh, line going up to the D string. We're remaining on the E string and in the beginning it's just a little bit easier uh, if you play the melody and the bass note together. This will make it a little bit easier to get this into your fingers. Now as soon as you have it down you can switch back to the original melody or if you're proficient in this style of playing you can do this right away because Tommy usually plays this. So yet again the melody in between the bass notes really slowly. Second possibility, something he plays a lot as well, is this one. So the first triad with the G and the B note on the bass note. Then and back to the bass note. So only the very first two melody notes on the bass note and everything else back in between. So just back to back to each other. So this is what I explained in the video, uh, but I forgot to mention that I changed this to make it a little bit easier to get that interruption going. So the adjusted part, the part Tommy plays, or second variation, So those are the three options. So the first one is to get the bass pattern a bit easier into your fingers. The second and third option are what Tommy usually plays when he performs the song live. That's all that I needed to add to make the video more or less complete. Have fun with the rest of the video. Bye. But it, it's really weird in the beginning to be stuck in this alternating bass line and then all of a sudden have to play three times the exact same note and then launching into the alternating bass line once again. So keep a mind out for this. So one more time, up on this point, the whole bridge section. section is all built around the F chord. Remember I told you in the intro that in the bridge it's the thumb over the side of the neck cannot be avoided. This is the place. So we're starting with an F chord but not a full bar F chord. Thumb over the side of the neck on the first fret then ring finger third fret on the B string, middle finger second fret on the G string, an open B string and the index finger on the high E string first fret. Picking pattern in this part is always the same. Melody note in front of the beat, three, four. So it's always thumb, middle finger, thumb, index finger, thumb, middle finger, thumb, index finger. If you play it slowly, it's, it's almost like a classical uh, etude to, to get your fingers doing what they have to do. It's always exactly the same movement. Going 
from an F chord index finger on top to F major 7th, open E string, to F with an added 6th with the pinky on the 3rd fret of the B string, and then just to a plain F with the index finger 1st fret on the B string. So F major 7th, 6th, F. Then to F added 6th, adding the pinky on the 3rd fret of the high E string. Picking pattern is again exactly the same thing, but the only thing that is added is one pull off. So and if you time that pull off exactly right, the pull off will land together with the thumb on the low uh, E string. The next bar is, is exactly the same thing, only the last note is different. So we're going back up to that open E string. Oh, the whole F section. basically working around an F chord, ring finger 3rd fret on the B string, middle finger 2nd fret on the G string, index finger 1st fret on the B string. To start out with we're just playing that F bass note, open B, G string hammering on to the 2nd fret, open B string hammering on to the 1st fret, and then the same thing in pull-offs. Pulling straight back off to the open string and pulling back off with the middle finger also to the open G string. All the while the ring finger on the third fret keeps ringing out. So that's the lick with the F section in front. the verse. Now there's one uh, little thing I skipped that is when you uh, are coming down from the E minor chord this is the way you transfer so you're playing a hammer on and then to that high F. It messes a little bit with the bass notes. The last bass note of that E minor chord is actually already an F. see that, that last bass note. I'm already shifting up to the third fret. Tommy does this as well. I watched the video in really slow motion. He does the exact same thing to play that hammer on. He's all, already shifting up to that F uh, bass note. And once you put that F chord right behind it, it, it doesn't even, uh, it's no surprise to the ear. So it just uh, anticipating that chord by one one eighth note. And back in the next section. Let me play that bridge section for you one more time really slowly so you can follow along and that's all there is to know to this song. So one more time the bridge.
Deutsch. this part this is the only change that is being made you're moving to an E minor chord so the very last time so an E minor chord strum so bass note strum hammer on A string to the second fret strum same hammer on on the B string, and same hammer on again on the A string. You can strum up and down as well as if you like. Again, if you watch the video, Tommy does this with only the middle finger. So he's hammering on to a full E minor chord, just using the middle finger. It's really, really strange to watch. After this section, you play the melody one time again, but without the alternating thumb. So, it's the same chords, it's the same melody you already played dozens of times by now. Tommy often plays this, this this little embellishment on the D over F sharp, F sharp chord. So if you want that, it's just a really quick pull off, play the second fret and pull off as soon as you hear the note. With the rest going. And then it's straight back into the intro. very last lick is different in one thing uh, apart from the bridge is that you will play both uh, F notes so the thumb over the side of the neck on the first fret and the index finger or the ring finger fretting the third fret and down here you will now play the thumb and the index finger together and using the middle and ring finger to play the rest of the lick One more time, that last section. little tune only 10 bars to get into your fingers the tutorial again as always has been really elaborate adding in variations uh, and, and certain alternatives you can try to make it work for you but the basic of the song is really uh, it's a short and sweet song always the same melody always the same repetitions and it's a joy to play so have fun with this one and see you next time bye bye <laughs>